Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. Today, we're doing a sit down video. The first Q&A slash channel update slash channel anniversary. I asked you guys to send in a bunch of questions, which I have here in my handy dandy telephone. I just thought it'd be the perfect time to kind of do a get to know me. Just want to say thank you for all your support and all of your kindness and love the past few weeks, the past few months. All of the channel members, you guys are the shit. I get really sweet comments about how my videos sometimes make you guys' day or it helps you out with a certain situation you have going on in your life. And uh, you guys also do the same for me. It's not just a one-way thing. You guys make my day too. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Okay. Can I be vulnerable for a second? Is that okay? Let's chill, sit back. Let's get to know each other a little bit. First question comes from Pepper. Um, she's asking the real question. Uh, best pizza toppings and why is it pineapple with a salty meat so good? Huh, <laughs> I agree with you. Pineapple absolutely slaps on pizza. And if you don't think so, you either haven't had it or you're like allergic to pineapples, which is completely fair. <laughs> Will I ever play Sekiro? Answer is yes, 100%. And I am extremely excited about it. Um, I know this is a simple question, but how do you say your name? I've always wondered if I've been saying it correctly. Um, yeah, my name actually isn't that common, so I totally understand your question here. The way you say my name is Matthias, and then my last name is Gago. So, uh, Matthias Gago. And then the nickname is uh, Matty, but you can choose to call me Matty, if it so pleases you. And what are your top three favorite and least favorite bosses in the Souls games so far? That is a great question. Let's start with the least favorite. All right, so in no specific order, Commander Nile. What? Then I have the Witch of Hamwick. I just, this is a boss? <laughs> that boss was just extremely boring and it was just like a very strange experience. Like there's just some like really forgettable ones, I guess. Like the one reborn. <laughs> What is this, bro? I mean, it had a really cool cutscene, but like that was kind of it. I don't know. I'd probably put that one there and like maybe Rom, the vacuous spider. <laughs> like just purely because there's just so many goddamn spiders. And another one would probably be Malekith. <laughs> and then top three, um, I have Father, fa Father, Father Gascoin. That one's in the top three for Please sure. all over the shop. The music, the cutscene, oh, the way that you actually have to learn how to like parry and do all these different things. Uh, I just thought it was such a special boss and absolutely love it. And then I actually have Radagon and the Elden Beast, uh, the last two bosses of Elden Ring. I absolutely love that fight um, from the music to the actual moves to the way I felt. I just thought it was oh. such a perfect way to end uh, such an incredible journey um, and millennia. <laughs> I know that may seem odd because it took me, I think, 202 tries, but from the lore that I learned later to the music, to her character itself, to just everything about it, I just absolutely loved fighting. The cutscene, like the mid cutscene in the second phase, like still gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. And uh, yes, the freaking roll attack is ridiculously stupid, but I don't know. Am I just being a simp? Maybe, I don't know. So yeah, I guess that's my top three. And for now, we have so many more bosses to experience, uh, which I'm very excited about. Yo, dude, question for your Q&A. What's your favorite color? Mine is purple or rank. <laughs> uh, my favorite color is black. But every time that I say that, people are like, that's a shade. So, uh, teal, th this blue. That's, that's, yeah, just, let's just go with that. What's the Krabby Patty secret formula? Well, Jack, let me tell you, it's so A real question would be, do you plan on playing the other Souls games? I can't wait to watch you suffer through the worst one, DS2 if you are. Well, Jack, thank you so much, I appreciate that. The answer is yes, I will be playing all of them. You mentioned you worked a full-time job as well as doing YouTube. How do you manage your time since both are very time consuming and can wear a person out easily? Yes. <laughs> so basically, yes, I have a full-time job, nine to five, Monday to Friday, and uh, I work for a marketing company. I am a graphic designer and video editor, and uh, that's what I do for a living. I create digital advertising for many different clients. <laughs> that is what I went to school for. I went to school for advertising and marketing, and then I guess not major, but I decided to go the creative route. That is what I do before I do YouTube. How do I manage my time, you ask? There's a lot of late nights, a lot of hours on the weekends. The fact that I'm playing Souls games also doesn't help because sometimes it takes four, five, six hours to record one video because a boss is just taking forever. <laughs> sometimes it can be a lot, but that's where the love for it really comes in hand. Like I love doing YouTube, I love editing 
editing videos. I, I love seeing you guys' reaction and uh, everything that comes with it. So for me, staying up late or, you know, getting off work and instantly working on YouTube for like six, seven, eight hours, it's great i absolutely love it i guess one thing i could get better at is uh like scheduling my shoots and my edit days uh sometimes a video has to go out the next day and i have to like film it and edit it and it can be kind of stressful but you manage it you manage it. If, if you love what you're doing uh the, the clock you're not really paying attention to it sure i could be sleeping more sure i could be eating better but whatever man what music group do you like slash prefer what kind of profession do you work in and your favorite dish great questions uh, what music group do I like? And there's too many. At the bottom of the channel, there are music playlists made by yours truly. I think the only genre that I don't really ever listen to is like country. <laughs> but yeah, check those out if you're interested and uh, let me know what you think. What kind of profession do you work in? I already answered that. Favorite dish is a really tough one. I do love shawarma. I love Mexican food. Uh, I do love you some Chinese food. I guess that's not really a dish. <laughs> Shit. I love shawarma. Yeah, shawarma, chicken shawarma with uh, garlic potatoes. That is, I don't eat it often though, because every time I eat it, I end up in a coma, but I do love breakfast. I do love breakfast. I make, I make bomb breakfast, man. Again, not really a dish. Anyways, <laughs> hope that answers your question. All right, here's a fun one. Can you show slash explain your tattoos? I think it's cool to see the reasons why people chose the ones they have. And I see you have a few, uh, which is very cool. Yeah, man, absolutely. I definitely wish I had more. I do plan on getting absolutely covered. This is my first tattoo. It's a traditional style, I guess, garden angel. And it represents uh, my uncle who I lost when I was very young. Damn, okay, we're actually talking about this. <laughs> I really wanted it to mean something uh, to me. As the list goes on, you'll see that that kind of <laughs> went away. That's the one I have on my right arm. I wanted something to remember him by because he really influenced the person that I am today. He was just a really awesome guy and I just love the fact that I kind of carry him with me. That was my first tattoo. And then my second tattoo was a very stupid decision. I was very excited about getting the first one. So I was like, I'm just gonna get something like whatever for the second one. But I got this moth. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I, I don't like it. I mean, it's not a bad tattoo. It's kind of cool. Not really, but I don't see it like ever. It's on the outside of my leg. So it's like, here, I'll show you. Oh shit. Um, that's the one. And uh, yeah, I don't like it. And then after that one, I got this flower here. It's a white rose. It says mom on it because um, I love my mom. It's just like a traditional mom tattoo. There's not really a big story behind it. I just, my mom's, my mom's the shit. So I got that one for her. And also if you look at it upside down, it says, whoa. <laughs> And then I have the Flame of the West from Lord of the Rings. Um, it's kind of like a cool take on it because it is it is put together, but you can still see the cracks. Um, that was a decision that my tattoo artist made and I absolutely loved it. But the way I see it is like, you know, even when you break and you get put together, your scars are still visible. I'm just joking. <laughs> it's got no meaning whatsoever. Aside oh, I'm out of focus. It's got no meaning whatsoever aside from the fact that I love Lord of the Rings and uh, yeah. And I'm also planning on doing kind of the same thing on this arm, but a lightsaber, because I also love Star Wars. Um, probably get Anakin's or something, but yeah. Those are my actual professionally done tattoos. And then I have two very stupid ones that I actually made myself during the pandemic. Literally bought a kit from Amazon and I started practicing on fruits first and then I moved on to my body and uh, well, should have just stuck to the fruits, but. This is the year that I was born, 1998. Came out pretty shit. And uh, this is a little TIE fighter. Little TIE fighter, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Great questions, thank you, man. And also, yes, like I said, I wanna get so many more and I'll keep you guys posted on my tattoo journey. What was your first manga collection? For me, it was Chainsaw Man. Have a good one, bro. Well, Canon. For me, it was also Chainsaw Man. <laughs> yeah, I'm missing a couple there. Uh, my brother has some right now, but I know the show is coming out soon. I'm extremely excited about it. The trailer looks phenomenal. If you haven't read it, you should check it out. It's hilarious. It's super metal. Norman says, I enjoy watching you play Bloodborne, Matias. My question is, which do you prefer overall? This game or Elden Ring? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, I think it's a bit too early for me to pick one or the other because we haven't finished Bloodborne. I feel like it wouldn't be fair. Um, but I kind of want to make that decision kind of after finishing Bloodborne. But also, I don't think I could even like 
come up with like a right answer to that because they're just such different games. Like, I don't know, I guess we'll see. Great question. And I am wondering the same thing. All right, next question. Uh, is your goal moving to Twitch? For me, not really a fan of that platform, but I'll just wait for any YouTube uploads. Yeah, this is a topic that I've seen a lot in the comments and uh, live streaming is definitely in the horizon. I am just waiting on buying my actual PC. I'm getting closer and closer to having enough funds and paying off my credit card to actually buy like a really, really good uh, gaming and streaming PC. So once we have that, I do wanna start live streaming. I think that would be the most fun thing to do with you guys. And also it would allow me to produce a lot more content. I had thought about it in the past and I was kind of like 50-50, but everything that's been going on on Twitch lately, like it's kind of made me really think about it. And I honestly think that I'll most likely be staying on YouTube. I think it's just a lot easier to kind of keep everything under the same platform as well as, you know, YouTube is going to be around for years and years to come. It's literally owned by Google. And I do think YouTube is going to catch up to the level that Twitch is at in terms of like the chat and how like the whole streaming experience looks like. Um, YouTube is kind of behind a little bit on that, but they are making their way. And uh, yeah. Do you think Bloodborne is harder than Elden Ring? That is a great question. And my answer is no. And it is a no because Elden Ring was my first Souls game. So the learning curve was astronomical for me. I found that game extremely hard to even like understand what was going on or what to do. But Bloodborne definitely has a learning curve as well uh, that I have to like adopt to. If Bloodborne was my first Souls game, I think it would have been very, very tough. <laughs> <laughs> also, Bloodborne has things that Elden Ring does and that also make it pretty difficult. Like the rally system, in a way, makes Bloodborne so much harder because it puts you in situations where like, do I try and get my health back by getting like three hits, but also if I get one, I die. Like it's just a lot of like mental stress. <laughs> All right, great question. What Soulsborne game will you play next? And my answer is, you get to decide. At the end of Bloodborne, we'll be creating a poll in the community tab, same way we did after Elden Ring, and you guys are gonna get to pick which one we play next. Hiya, oh, yeah. I've been watching for a couple months and just subscribed. Your Millennia video killed me, but just a Q&A question, what was the game that got you into gaming slash your favorite video game? Well, I think one of the first ever video games I ever played was probably Super Mario 64. My cousins had it, so I had to go to their, their, their house to play it, and every time that I was there, dude, like, I felt this, like, crazy amount of joy, and, like, it was also like one of the first like 3D games that actually like properly did it. So it was just mind boggling to me. And then after that, I had a PS1, Harry Potter, Spider-Man, like all those freaking classics. Then I moved on to a PS2. I still have it. I play Kingdom Hearts on that. Battlefront 2, Resident Evil 4. Like there's just so many goddamn classics that came out for the PS2. After that, I moved on to a Nintendo Wii, which also came with some bangers like Super Mario Galaxy. You know, then I had an Xbox 360, which came with, you know, Gears of War 2, which is one of my favorite games of all time. Halo Reach, Halo 3. I guess I also used to play a ton of war games. Medal of Honor Airborne or Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway. Like Medal of Honor European Assault. Like, dude, oh, like, bro, there's just been so many awesome games over the years that like, it's just so hard to pick a favorite. Maxwell would like to know if I actually pee in pools um, and where I got that hat from. Well, Max, you'd be a liar if you said you never peed in a pool, okay? So you can choose to be a liar if you want, but you know, to each their own and also uh, Amazon. <laughs> Hey Matthias, my question is, what do you do outside of gaming and can we get a setup tour one day? Dude, you can get a setup tour right now. So this is the setup that I'm currently working with. This is kind of what I see when I'm recording. This is where I usually keep the OBS running. This is where I actually play the games. Um, it is a 27 inch Acer something. This is my also my work setup. Um, so it's, you know, it's got to work for both work and also uh, my YouTube channel. So I have this second monitor here and I have this keyboard, which I absolutely love. It's got that like mechanical sound to it. <laughs> and then I have my microphone here, which I have on an arm. Um, I have my headphones here. Uh, this thing kind of just like looks like that, which is kind of cool. Mouse. And uh, I have the Logitech Real, I think is the name of it, which is sitting on a tripod. Don't mind my room, I know it's messy as hell. <laughs> I'm doing laundry as you can see. Um, yeah, it's like sitting on a tripod like that. And uh, I also have this light here. 
this is like the perfect light for what I need right now. Um, and then back here, I have my PS5. And I also have these Yamaha speakers that were gifted to me by a friend for absolutely no reason. Connor, I fucking love you. He just gave these to me with an audio interface as well. That's just the type of friend that he is. Oh, and I have my controller on the, this little stand here, which charges it. Very happy with it. I've bought many of these things kind of over time. It's definitely been a work in progress, but I absolutely love it. You should subscribe to this channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's about it. And also, oh, this is like a phone thing that like just charges your phone and then have my iPad here. That's the setup, guys. I hope you like it. <laughs> oh, and I guess I have my secret lab chair. But yeah, that's the setup. I, I hope you like it, man. <laughs> I'll keep you guys updated if I ever change it. Um, but very happy with what I have right now. Um, it's more than enough. In the future, I would love to, you know, have a PC, maybe a stand up desk. Things like that, but I have everything I need right now and I can't ask for more, so uh, yeah. That's the setup, man. Back to the video. What do I do outside of gaming? I work, I watch a lot of YouTube, I hang out with my friends, spend time with family, and uh, I guess I like to watch like TV shows and stuff. Just chill at home, it's just, yeah. It's kinda it. <laughs> I would like to travel maybe in the future. A few times that I have gone traveling, I've absolutely loved it. And uh, I hope that I get to do that more one day. Alex wants to know if I have an OnlyFans. Um, well, Alex, do you want me to have an OnlyFans? I'm joking. <laughs> Fernando would like to know what I do for work, which I've already answered. And he wants to know if I speak French. Um, no, I do not speak French, but I do speak Spanish. It is my first language. And uh, yeah. You can do whatever you want with that information. <laughs> Shadow Man would like to know if I'm planning on going long hair or getting a haircut soon. <laughs> I love how he said, or are we getting a haircut soon? Like it's uh, both four hairs. <laughs> I, like, I like how you think, bro. Um, what, are you trying to say something? Yeah, no, I, yeah. I think I'm gonna go long hair. Winter's coming. I gotta protect the neck and the ears. What? How do you feel about the 30 frames per second in Bloodborne? Is it noticeable or do you not mind? I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I get very used to it. Um, I don't even see it, to be honest. Uh, it wasn't up until a couple days ago that I went and checked one of my old like Elden Ring videos and I saw the jump like from 30 to 60 and it is insane. Yeah, I guess once you get used to it, like you don't really see it. Uh, I'm also only playing Bloodborne right now. So I'm, yeah, I got pretty used to it. It's not that bad for me. Have you considered numbering the episodes in the titles? <laughs> that is a question that I have seen for a couple people here and there. Um, and the answer is yes, I have considered it. I've actually done it in the past on the channel, um, but I kind of hate it to be honest. I don't think it looks very good. And this is no shade to people that do it. Like I totally understand why you would do it. Like I, I have done it in the past and it makes sense for the viewers to kind of follow along. And I'm just very picky with like thumbnails and titles. And like, I just like the more simple look. I put a lot of work into my thumbnails, adding a big like 25 on it. Just like, it just looks kind of weird, you know? So at least for me, um, if that is something that you guys would like, um, too bad, I'm not adding it. <laughs> I just think that if you really care about the order of the episodes, you can just click on the channel and or the playlist and just like, you know, it's it's not that hard. You got this. No, but very valid question. Very valid question. What is the name of the tune you use for your intro? The song is from a stock music uh, website. I have looked it up on YouTube just to see if it's there and it's not. I just got really lucky, found it, and I've been abusing the crap out of it literally since the dawn of time. So uh, you guys need to let me know if it ever gets old because <laughs> sometimes it gets a little old for me. Um, but I do like it and a lot of you love it. So it does have that like really nostalgic feel to it. So. Beard ASMR question mark. Do you guys like that? Is that something you would like to see? I highly doubt it, but thank you. Maybe it could be part of the OnlyFans. I don't know. <laughs> Blackwing BF says, I found your channel last week. Can I sub? Yes. Yes, you can sub. When's your birthday and what is your ethnic background? Great question, dude. Uh, my birthday is on November 28th. Um, and my ethnic background, I guess. Uh, I was born in Venezuela, in South America. Uh, this little guy right here. I lived there for about 12 years, I believe, 12, 13 years. And then my amazing parents would decided to move to Canada. And uh, yeah, I've been here ever since. Part of my family is also Italian, so I guess I have Italian, Venezuelan, and I'm a Canadian citizen now. So I'm just a mixture of all kinds of shit, so. <laughs> All right, so we got Sam's question here. You mentioned that you had six or seven channels before this one, but they didn't work. I'm curious to know what those channels were about. 
Uh, that is a great question, dude. And uh, yeah, I can go into a couple of them, I guess. Um, my first ever YouTube channel, I created it when I was about, I think, 11 or 12 years old. Uh, I was actually called Geekland. Um, and I uploaded three videos before I gave up. One of them was showcasing my collection of Xbox 360 games. Uh, the second one was an unboxing of an already opened Xbox 360 Slim. And the third video was a, an, um, an unboxing of again, an opened PSP. <laughs> so... <laughs> And also, I think that channel is somewhere out there. And if any of you can somehow find it and send me that link, I would be in debt for life to you because I would love to see those videos. The, they are in Spanish. Um, and they're just so cringe, but like, I would love to see that. Then I created another channel when I was younger that I wanted to do like skits on, but like they're just funny, man. And I also didn't have like the tools to, like edit or anything like that. So again, I just gave up. In high school, I tried to have one with a couple friends that also totally just, we just did not do, do anything aside from like one video. I tried to have one with a girlfriend of mine that also just did not go well. Then I tried to have a channel where I react to movies. Um, that was actually the one before this one. And uh, that one also failed miserably. The whole spiel of that uh, channel was uh, dude watches chick flicks, basically. So <laughs> I was just gonna basically uh, watch all of these rom-coms and uh, just react to them. But then I realized how much actual work it is. And if you don't have a camera, it's just really, really hard. I was trying to film it with my iPhone and it just kept like running out of storage. Like it was just such a mess, dude. And But yeah, I think those are most of them. Yeah, very, very silly ideas, you know? Looking for instant gratification, which if you're doing YouTube, you gotta do it for the long run. You cannot expect results within the next six months at least. That's what happened to me. I saw absolutely no, no traffic for six months and I was uploading almost like three videos a week. It's a crazy journey. It, th there's a reason why not everyone does it. It's pretty silly and you do sacrifice a lot, but if you do love doing it and if you do love what you're making and what you're sharing to the world, it's a blast and it's, uh, I can only hope that one day maybe I can do this full time because it is something that I have noticed brings me more joy than anything else. So whew, that was a lot. I think we're going to end it there, guys. I think I went through most of the questions that I gathered. There were a few that I couldn't get to and I'm really sorry. But if you want to leave them down below, maybe I can answer them in the next Q&A, which will probably be maybe at the 10K mark or I don't know. We'll see. But again, I'd like to thank you so much for being a part of this, for being a part of the channel, for watching this. Your support is incredible and I cannot thank you guys enough, seriously. I think I'm out of focus again, which is fucking fantastic. So yeah, thank you so much for watching guys, really appreciate it. We'll go back to regular programming in the next episode. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. We're trying to hit 10K by the end of the year. It would be amazing. It's been quite the journey and uh, we're only getting started. So take care and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.